a very serious procedure to store your own Bitcoin. It's a, uh, you need to be responsible for your own wallet. You basically are your own bank. This is the freedom that is offered with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, but it does entail a high responsibility. You have to make sure that you've written down your recovery phrase and you've stored it in a safe place and that you keep track of all of your passwords. Now, uh, I'm not going to go into how you get the Ledger Nano X set up today. I've got a great video for that. I'll put a link to that up in the corner. I'm just going to show you how to store Bitcoin in the wallet today. Now you'll notice in Ledger Live that you can manage multiple uh, cryptocurrency accounts and multiple Bitcoin accounts. Uh, so it's a great interface and I invite you to explore that more if you check out that video. Right. I'm just going to go into uh, an empty Bitcoin account. Uh, this is probably what you'll see if you do uh, first time. All right now before I transfer the Bitcoin into this wallet, I want to make sure that I have my device connected to my computer with my USB cable and that I have entered my pin and unlocked my device. All right, this is what it's going to look like. You're going to see a home screen with all of your apps on here that you use for managing your different cryptocurrencies. You may just have Bitcoin on here and that's fine. Now I'm not going to click buy because I've already bought the Bitcoin, right? The, my Bitcoin is on Coinbase. I'm going to choose receive because I'm going to move some Bitcoin into this wallet, right? I'll hit continue here. And notice that the device will ask me to open the Bitcoin app, right? I'm going to click both buttons to do that. All right, and what it's doing here is verifying the Bitcoin address. So the Bitcoin address appears on my device and it also appears in the Ledger Live interface. I can just eyeball these two addresses and make sure that they're the same. All right, uh, now a Bitcoin address is very long and complicated because it involves very complicated mathematics to ensure the security of the network. So, but don't be intimidated by that long and complicated Bitcoin address. It's there to protect you. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click these two squares here so that I can copy the entire Bitcoin address into my clipboard. I'm going to click the metal button on the device to advance over to the next screen where it says approve. In order to approve, I'm going to just click both buttons. That's just approving the fail safe that the address on my device matches the address I see on my screen. I'll click done here. And now I'm gonna go back over to my Coinbase account where we're gonna withdraw the Bitcoin. Now, a lot of people ask me about this, so I just wanna clarify this from the beginning. You don't need to keep the device attached anymore, right? You've got the Bitcoin address and Coinbase will send the Bitcoin to your wallet address but you do not need the device attached anymore. You can safely disconnect it. Once you've verified that address, uh, the device does not need to be connected in order to receive the Bitcoin. All right, so uh, let's go over here to the send screen. We're gonna send the Bitcoin to our wallet. So we'll just go down here and paste in that address. I'm right clicking and then I'm gonna choose paste. Uh, if you like, you can use Control V uh, or you can use uh, Command V on the Macintosh or the Apple. This is really all I need as far as the address information. I can put a little memo to myself here. It's optional. But how much am I going to send? I'm going to choose to send all of my Bitcoin to myself today. You can edit this field, send as little or as much as you want. There's probably a minimum. But uh, now that I've got the amount and the address entered, I'll just hit continue. All right. Uh, it's going to charge me a small network fee. This is not really a fee from Coinbase. This is a fee on the Bitcoin blockchain. It's built in to the system. All right. So let's hit send now. And I need to put in my Google Authenticator code. 
which I will do, and then I'll hit confirm. And it's off, right? The Bitcoin is on its way to my wallet. Let's go back over to our Ledger Live and just keep an eye on the wallet and see what's happening. All right, and the Bitcoin came in, it's in my wallet, and it's safe and secure in my wallet, right? And this is an investment in your future, so now you've got it safe and sound in your own wallet. Before I sign off here, I'm going to show you how to send it back to Coinbase. A lot of people uh, get a little frustrated when, uh, say, Bitcoin is on uh, a run or a tear or whatever you want to call it, and they want to sell their Bitcoin. All right, uh, I'm going to show you how to send it back. So you'll know this, right? So in order to send it back, well, we'll just go over to Coinbase. Uh, and from the home screen, we're going to need to go to portfolio and to our Bitcoin portfolio, which as it's, as you can see now is empty. So we'll get back into the Bitcoin wallet interface. Now it's still showing that that Bitcoin outgoing is pending. But that's fine, right? We know it's in our wallet now. Uh, instead of send, we're going to do receive, right? We're going to send the Bitcoin back to our Coinbase account so that we can liquidate or trade or whatever we want to do, right? In this case, we're going to hit the two squares here. That's going to take the Bitcoin address of our Coinbase account and uh, put it in our clipboard. For those of you who don't know what I mean when I say clipboard, I'm talking about an invisible area of memory in your computer that holds information. That's where things go when you cut or copy and then uh, where they come from when you hit paste. <laughs> For those of you who are not aware of that. All right, so in this case, we're going to do a send. From Notice there's a send button now, right? Before there wasn't, right? Now that there's Bitcoin in the wallet, there is a send button. We'll hit send and we'll paste in that Bitcoin address and then we'll hit continue. Uh, now we can choose how much we want to send. We can write the amount here in Bitcoin or even in dollars, right? If I hit $40, it'll calculate how much $40 worth of Bitcoin is. Uh, and then we can also use this button here for send max if we want to send the entire amount, All right? Now, in order to do this, we're going to need to have our hardware device connected and the pin entered. This is where you definitely need the device connected. Ledger Live is the wallet interface, but uh, a key component of our, our Bitcoin wallet is this little device, which holds the private keys. You can think of this as more of a keychain than a wallet, right? This is just one piece of the wallet. This is where the private keys are held, uh, very similar to your car keys, right? So just in the same sense that you have this beautiful, expensive car out in your driveway, you can't drive it unless you have the keys. And the same with your Bitcoin wallet. You can't send Bitcoin out or move Bitcoin or drive your Bitcoin car, however you want to think of it, without your keys, right? So the keys are here. And I'm going to show you how this thing works. It's connected and the pin is entered, right? And I'm gonna choose continue here and it's gonna break down the uh, transaction. We'll hit continue. Now something uh, very secure is happening. The uh, Ledger Live is querying or uh, communicating with my little hardware device. And it's asking the hardware device to authorize the transaction. So if you look at the screen here, it's asking me to review the output. So I'm going to use the metal button to uh, advance through this. There's the amount I'm sending. There's the Bitcoin address of Coinbase. And now I choose accept. Now there's one more thing. There's the Bitcoin fees on the Bitcoin network, which is a separate transaction. So we need to confirm that as well. So we'll use the metal button to go through, there's the uh, small Bitcoin uh, network fees, and then we'll choose accept and send. And then the Bitcoin is off and uh, back to Coinbase. And you'll see there that uh, now my Bitcoin wallet is empty. We'll go back over to Coinbase 
we can do a little refresh here. And now it's receiving the Bitcoin that just got sent out. All right, I just wanted to give you that uh, so that you'll have a good idea of how Bitcoin gets moved back and forth, right? Uh, but the reason that I'm doing this is uh, just as a demonstration. But uh, my general practice with Bitcoin is the best place to store it is in my own wallet. Uh, Coinbase is a great platform to uh, buy, sell, and even store your Bitcoin. But the promise of Bitcoin and the blockchain is a decentralized system where the user is in charge. The user controls their own wallet and has full custody of their Bitcoin. And that is why I choose to store my Bitcoin in my own wallet.